Hey everyone, I'm Paul DC. I'm the author of The Way of Awareness and welcome to this fifth episode of Awareness Coffee Talk, my podcast. If you are listening to this on Spotify, bear in mind that every previous Sunday to the releasing of the audio version on Spotify, you can catch the video version of this same episode, kind of like in a backstage mode on my YouTube channel. You have all my socials and links at iampoldc.com slash links. Over there you can also learn a little bit more about my spirituality book, The Way of Awareness. And basically YouTube is uh, the place where I have, as of now, the most amount of content. I also have uh, been having for the past couple of months, since November, I believe, Uh, my weekly spirituality newsletter on Substack, but everything is on that URL I just shared. So today we are going to not discuss because I don't have a set, strictly set point of view on, on this. I do know where my heart and my field of awareness stands when it comes to these matters, but we are going to discuss from a supernatural point of view, from a spirituality point of view, from the point of view of the unseen, the concept of private property. Private property as we know it nowadays, right? I'm not trying to use that label to refer to something uh, perhaps a little bit different than what you may already know. Private property as in this is my house, that is your house, the street is a government property and so forth. We have to remember, I like to first go from the wider scope into the uh, very specific uh, topic that from a spiritual sp standpoint, if you will, we are, we still are, we were and we will always be uh, one same mind expressed through and from the one source of consciousness, which is what many religions refer to as God or even different gods of the same religion, which in my own humble opinion, they just represent different aspects of this one same God. And even though we still are part of and that very same one mind, one source of consciousness, we come here, we accept to be bound by the illusion of time, and we come here to this earth to play a little game, if you will, a game where we get to experience for a very brief period of time what it feels like to not be unity, to actually be separated, to actually be divided, to actually be existing in a realm where everything screams division. Even though you may love the person sitting next to you, they are not you. I mean, your body ends at one point and the other person's body starts where yours end. Your mind, it happens the same. Thoughts are not shared. Even the, the mere concept of telepathy does not include the concept of unity. It includes the concept of one individual separated mind being able to read what another individual separated mind is thinking. So we could state as a very grotesque and high level rule that everything that strives towards unity resonates at the same frequency of our very own source of makeup and everything that pushes us towards division and the sense of separation is actually the opposite. As a second point of reference, I will once again bring up and mention the beautiful five books of the Law of One which uh, they took me, I think, a little over a year to go through them. 
but they are the kind of book that you will want to read if you want to get a different interpretation on the whole, on the universe, on the purpose for existence. And in, in these books, in this saga, they are not even books, they are channelings, to be more precise. So in this set of channelings, one of the messages that came through when they were transcribed, it referred, it gave references to how advanced higher beings, societies look like. Not even in this dimension. At the end of the episode, I'm going to walk away leaving this question for you to think about that if what we are about to discuss can be possible in our realm perhaps not now of course but in 100,000 years can we in this third dimension with physical highly dense carbon based bodies will be able to embody these types of advanced societies so the book mentions that in the fourth dimension which contrary to what many people think there are bodies or vehicles so your soul if you will or your consciousness your individual consciousness part of the whole can express itself but i think that we don't even have the necessary mental capacity to understand how a fourth dimensional physical vehicle may look like but it is not that there is nothing after these bodies there are other types of vessels less dense and they function differently they do resonate much more with that prim primordial source of consciousness because they are much closer if you will even though distance is uh, spatial distance is an illusion so in these advanced societies the book mentions the channelings mention that for instance there is no private property because there is a full understanding a full embodiment if you will of the concept of unity and the main staples of each dimensional step towards evolution spiritual evolution in this octave of the universe is usually the fact that at each level unity is more expressed than in the previous density or dimension so this means that what may seem far-fetched and almost impossible for us beings in the third dimension is actually something very natural in the other realm and with that said the this saga also mentions that the food is different but there is a certain type of food that it doesn't serve the cultural uh, place modern food has within humankind in the third dimension but there is a type of fuel to sustain those less dense physical vessels or pseudo physical vessels another staple is that as I mentioned, children, they don't have parents, even though they come from these vessels, which we could argue that they would be their parents' vessels, so they would have parents. But it is not like in our current society where legally children are the private property of their parents, at least until they can make their own decisions when they are 18 or even 21 in some countries so everything is a different paradigm that is anchored in the following 
the full understanding of unity. It is an expression of existence that is much closer to fully embodying the ultimate truth, the primordial truth, that there is no division whatsoever. In fact, the entity or higher being that sends the channeled messages according to these books, it belongs to the sixth density where beings in this highly advanced density or dimension, they are formed by what once was millions of different seemingly individual units of consciousness. This means that the consciousness of what could possibly be, I don't know, one million people here on earth, they gather all together into this social memory complex to conform a more advanced being, summing up exponentially the experience, the spiritual experience and the lessons learned of all those one million individuals. The division becomes less real because they get to the realization that it was always an illusion. So the illusion of separation starts to dissolve. And according to these books, the ultimate step is literally becoming one with the source. With that source that perhaps billions of years ago we departed with the mission of being able to answer the eternal question the Creator asked itself, which is, what can I become? So it divided, so it could observe itself and get a different point of view of all the possibilities it could be. One of those possibilities is you, is me, is your next lifetime, your previous lifetime, and so forth with everything that will ever occur not only in this reality but, but in all realities in the whole extension of all possible and potential existence so if we go back to the human concept of private property it is just a poor and evolved version that basically tries to protect our property or our well-being or ourselves from the claws of another self. So it is a highly unevolved concept if we put it into context and contrast with what I have just explained about higher dimensions and highly evolved beings but i often like to sit and meditate deeply on these subjects because there is a point very deep in meditation where you can actually feel it in your heart that it makes a whole lot of sense the fact that private property will not exist in higher realms at least not in the way we perceive it as of now. The mere concept of private property is what keeps us often or usually clinging in an unhealthy manner to the ephemeral, where we sacrifice the eternal or the lessons we are supposed to spiritually learn while we are alive here in this beautiful opportunity of being here on earth. We sacrifice that in exchange for the ephemeralness of the nothingness. To get things that we will never be able to take out from this realm. So I want to now pose the following question. Because the way uh, native tribes, native societies and native uh, native people are portrayed in modern uh, entertainment in movies, TV series, books and so forth is as 
it, it's a, as if they were, I don't know, kind of like unevolved. Like they didn't have technology, they didn't have complex legal systems, but somehow, some way, it seems as if they lived much more uh, or much healthier lives, as if they had a type of knowledge that now we can only dream of, a type of connection with nature and with unity that we can only imagine having our pineal gland so atrophied by the modern way of living, we could even begin to grasp the level of evolution these native tribes still have nowadays. If you stop paying attention at what perhaps Hollywood has portrayed through, throughout the past uh, decades. And this knowledge is manifested in the beautiful story of how Manhattan came to be. Manhattan as in one of the five boroughs of New York City. Uh, most of you will know uh, this, this story. For the ones that are watching this on the live stream, on the video version, I am sharing screen now. And Well, the history of Manhattan it says here from Wikipedia, the area of present-day Manhattan was originally part of Lenape territory. European settlement began with the establishment of a trading post founded by colonists from the Dutch Republic in 1624 on Lower Manhattan. The post was named New Amsterdam in 1626. Uh, all right, there's the etymology of the word and then here's a little bit of the story. You can read this by yourself, but the point is that, as everyone knows, um, the European got from the natives the whole extension of Manhattan for basically a couple of bucks. Nowadays, once in a while, uh, there's even a meme uh, comparing how expensive it is to live nowadays in New York City versus how much uh, the Dutch uh, bought the entire island uh, centuries ago. I don't remember the exact amount, but I wouldn't dare to call it pocket change. It would be pocket change nowadays, but you have centuries of inflation to account for so let's just settle that it was a bargain and history has portrayed the natives that actually sold the island to the dutch as if they were idiots like who would sell an entire island for a couple of bucks right but there is a deeper truth in this and there is a there is a highly evolved spiritual angle that makes this story come to full sense and makes it understandable from a highly advanced society point of view that actually explains why they accepted that deal. They accepted that deal because they thought that the Dutch were crazy. They thought that they were madmen because of the following, who on earth believes that a human being can own a piece of land? How can a human being, a creation, an, an expression of the one creator, how could he or she be able to own and appropriate a piece of nature? another beautiful manifestation of that whole source of consciousness. How could it be? So by believing they were crazy, they were trying to do something that cannot be done, they agreed on that deal. And you can perceive here how advanced they were 
how actually how deep their knowledge of existence and comprehension they had in fact this is the perhaps the craziest part of it that we are here on this realm as human beings in a world that screams division all around us to actually be able to embody to the best of our abilities unity in this realm and there is no other and more beautiful way to express unity in this physical dense reality than to learn how to become one with nature and becoming one with nature and with the planet and also with other people with the plant life with the animal life with uh, natural resources is actually understanding that private property simply does not exist it's just an illusion within an illusion within an illusion that it does serve a purpose i mean modern society would not be possible without the human made concept of private property but perhaps we clinged a little bit too hard to it while sacrificing very important focus that we should be putting elsewhere within ourselves exploring within ourselves so when we express outwards we interact with the outer world trying to become one with whatever you have in front of you instead of seeing another expression of the same source of consciousness as an enemy someone to eradicate someone to hate upon and so forth so if you ask me i do fully agree on what this book says about advanced higher being societies about the non-existence of private property everything is for everyone because no one would dare to take advantage why because as an evolved being one understands that whatever you give to others you give it to yourself whatever you do to others you do it to yourself and if you take advantage of others you immediately become a victim of yourself you are being taken advantage of by none other than yourself the outside is a perfect mirror of the inside that is the main cornerstone that allows these higher advanced being societies to not have to have private property because it's from this spiritual standpoint highly ludicrous i hope you at least try to consider this in your heart and in your mind and you're able to feel it in your heart because it's super interesting and it can pave the way for a different kind of society to start making its way into our present time that we can become a little bit more evolved and a little bit more focused on what truly matters on the spiritual experiences that we will take back home in another attempt of answering what could the creator become i hope you enjoyed this episode and see you the next one